Okay, so so let's continue from where we left off uh, yesterday. So we were looking at this <coughs> sp power m, and uh, we saw that finally we could come down to this structure. Okay, clearly as a vector space. Right, we could we could write down the 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 field like this, okay, and I also gave you a construction. Okay, so this was so this this we came from the abstract idea, right? So we started with a field of size p par m. So we actually we started with a finite field, and we said there has to be a p and a m so that it's of size p par m, and then we said it has to have this form. It should be a vector space, so it's of this form. This is from the abstract angle, and then I gave you a concrete construction. Okay, so what was this? So this is from this is from the abstract side. And then we have a construction, right? What was our construction? Okay. Oops. <laughs> mm, what do I do? Get out of all this madness. Hmm. What did I do? Something or I mean, is it some multimedia? multimedia. What multimedia? I don't want any such thing. Oh my goodness! See, that's the problem with this connector. You know, I mean, this is also not very nice if I keep it on the side. Hmm. Okay. How do I make sure that that doesn't happen? I I tap my hand on something, right? There is a way to get out of that. Oh, what I should do? I should do this. Is it the lock? No, it's not the lock. Yeah, I should hide the taskbar. How do I? It's a complicated operation to hide properties. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So we also had a construction where we said S P bar M basically set of all polynomials, right? So this is quite important. Okay, so set of all polynomials. Once again with the A coming from S P, but the degree is restricted to n minus one. Okay, so degree is less than or equal to n minus one. Why does that happen now? Sorry. How does this go away? Okay. <laughs> so I have to say, somebody has to put some thought into how to use these things. You know, I think people who don't use it at all build it. Right? I think that much what makes sense to me. I cannot understand how they can build something like this and market it and sell it. Actually, anyway. So let's forget about. It. So. So, so we have polynomials of degree less than or equal to n minus one, and the coefficients come from f p. Okay, so that's fine. So that much is uh, easy to see, and uh, and then addition addition is is quite easy. Okay, so it's a polynomial addition. Okay, but for multiplication we needed a reducible polynomial, right? So we so we said there is a power of alpha. Which is a degree m irreducible polynomial. And I gave you kind of an argument saying such polynomials always exist for every m and every p. There is an irreducible polynomial of degree m, and uh, that is quite important. So how did we multiply? If you have a of alpha. B of alpha in S P par n, A of alpha times B of alpha. So this multiplication in in S P par n. If you were to multiply in S P par n, you can do the regular multiplication, but you do modulo higher alpha. 
Okay, so that's the idea in the construction. And they give you a very simple argument for why this should be a field. Okay, so addition is very trivial. Only thing you have to check is multiplicative inverse. Okay, so multiplicative popular here and all everything is trivial. Only the inverse has to be checked. And with I said this is the same proof like you did for ZP, you can repeat for this. Okay, same exact proof. You take the element one element one polynomial for which you want to find the inverse. You multiply it by all the elements of the multiplicative group. You cannot have a repetition. Because pi of alpha is irreducible, you cannot have a repetition. So each of them is distinct and you have exactly as many as the elements of the multiplicative group. So one of them should be equal to one and that gives you the inverse. Okay, so that's the idea. You can quickly show it. Okay, so let's see an example of this construction before we proceed. Okay, so it's similar to before. So we have this F9, right? Okay. So the 0, 1, 2, uh, let me see. So all the polynomials, I'm going to write it down explicitly just to just to see how it works. Okay, so we have alpha plus 1. Okay, so let me just write alpha to alpha. Alpha plus 1, alpha plus 2. 2 alpha plus 1. 2 alpha plus 1. Okay, so those are all the polynomials with coefficients from F3, right? So remember the 0, 1, 2, these days are from Z3, okay? So this everything is modular 3. Then I have to think of a irreducible polynomial of degree 2 in, in F3, okay? So, so we can let, for instance, power of alpha be, okay, something else happen now. Something else is going to start now. I apologize in advance for it. So, power of alpha is alpha squared plus 1. Okay, so we could do that. And then let me show you how to multiply something. So, let's say if I want to multiply alpha plus 1 by 2 alpha plus 2. Okay. You can go ahead and multiply like you would multiply any normal polynomial, except that coefficients you have to do modulo 3. Okay, so if you do quickly multiplication, you will get 2 alpha squared plus 4 alpha, which will become alpha itself plus Okay, this is what you get. So clearly, this is not an F9 immediately. Then what you should do? You should divide by alpha square plus one and take the remainder. Okay, so that is the same as using alpha square equals minus one. Okay, in this expression, both of them are exactly equal. Okay, when you divide by something and then take the remainder, you are basically taking the modulus, which means uh, the divisor you can equate to zero. It is the same operation. Okay, so that's a quick way in which you can do the division here. It's not very hard. So you see when you do this, it becomes alpha mod alpha squared. Right? So you put alpha squared equals minus 1, what happens? Minus 2 plus alpha plus 2. So minus 2 and plus 2 go away, it becomes alpha. Okay, so that's how we do the multiplication in these fields. Okay, in this construction, that's how we do it. Alright. So so there is there appears to be Okay. There appears, there appears to be a gap between this abstract idea that we have come up with and the construction. As far as addition is concerned, both of these are identical. Right? The way you do addition is vector addition and the abstract thing. We also do the same thing here in the construction. Okay? But multiplication seems a bit more fancy, seems to, seems to have come from nowhere. Okay? In the construction, we have just come up with the multiplication. But it turns out, even from the abstract idea, you can come down to that multiplication. You can show that nothing else can happen. Okay, so, which is what I am going to do next and the ideas are a bit more complicated, the multiplicative group is slightly more complicated, but well, the proofs are slightly more complicated than the addition, but eventually you will see it is very simple. Okay, so, that is the idea. Alright, so we are going to begin by looking at the multiplicative group. Okay, so, that is denoted as pm star. Okay. Right? So, that is the multiplicative group. So, star is without the 0, so it is a multiplicative group. So, it will have how many elements? 3 power m minus 1 elements. Okay. So, there is there is someone who gave us this finite field, right? So, we can ask that there is some more questions to figure out what the multiplicative group looks like. Okay. So, if, it, if in the entire field we had 0 and 1 and we could add 1 to itself and then figure out something about the additive group. Okay. That is what we did. Now, in the multiplicative group, what can you do? Okay, so you don't know anything else. You have one, but then if you multiply one with itself, you just keep getting one. You don't get anything new. Okay, so.
So you have to say something like you, you take an element of FTM star and then multiply it with itself. Okay. So if you keep multiplying it with itself, what can happen? Suppose I say beta is an element of FTM star, p power n star, and then I look at this beta, beta squared, beta power 3, so on. What should happen? Once again, it has to repeat. Right? I mean, it cannot go on and on and on forever. So it has to repeat at some point, and then once again, you can show that the first place it repeats, it will become 1. Okay. So it's also not very hard to show. So basically, in this sequence, there exists R such that, okay, there exists minimal R such that beta power R is 1. Okay, what do I mean by minimal R? Beta power 1, comma beta square, so on till beta power R minus 1. Those guys will never be 1. None of them will be 1. But beta power R is 1. First time 1 appears in the sequence is this minimal R such that beta power R is 1. So this minimal R has a name. It's called the multiplicative order of beta. Okay. Alright. So this, this guy is called the multiplicative order of beta. Okay. So the minimal R. So let's define multiplicative order. Okay, it's so doing something here. I don't know why. Why does it do that? I mean, once in a while it does that. My. Do you guys know why this is happening? When I go close, it changes it to star or something. I don't know why. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Have to go to the next page, okay? Okay. So, so multiplicative order of theta is the minimal R such that theta power R equals 1. Okay. So, this is an interesting and important quantity. Okay. We can show a lot of interesting relations uh, in properties for this theta power R. Okay. So, the first thing I am going to show is so, so, okay, so you might ask about additive order. Okay, every element also has an additive order, right? So, if you take that element and add, repeatedly add it, eventually it will go to 0, right? But then the additive order in, in uh, finite fields is not very interesting, okay? Because uh, you have a prime characteristic and all of them have to be added a prime number of times to get you, get you to 0. So, the additive order is really not interesting. So, when people say order of an element in a finite field, usually it is a multiplicative order. The additive order is not so meaningful in finite things, it's not so varied or interesting. So usually it's the multiplicative order. Okay, so, so oftentimes I'll drop the multiplicative and simply say order if I interpret this as multiplicative order. This yeah, yeah, in general. This is a general definition. Yeah, yeah. In, in any group, if you have an identity element, how many times you have to operate beta by itself to get one as multiplicative order? But in a general group, so there might be no order. If it's an infinite group. There may not be any order defined. Okay, so but in finite groups, it will always be there. No, 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 not at all. Uh, as in different for group, as in uh, for each element. Yeah, it's not a, it's not okay. There's no order for the group itself. Okay, usually when people say order of the group, they mean the size of the group. <laughs> so it's all these are terminology. So when you say order for every element of a group, there is a different order. Finite group, definitely yes. Okay. All right. So, so multiplicative order, minimum R such that beta power is one. So the first property you can show is R will divide the size of P power one star. Okay. This is in general true for any group. In any group, any finite group, the order of any element will divide the size of the group okay, or order of the group. Okay. So that's the general property. So for any beta. So, see, I am writing R here. It means you have to think of R as order of any element of FPM star. Okay, don't, don't think that this one, only this R will divide. Okay, so, order of any element of FPM star will divide this. Okay, so there are a couple of ways of proving it. Okay, so which is what P power M minus 1. Okay, there are a couple of ways of proving it. And uh, the first thing, first way is I will appeal to some notion that I defined before. So, you can. The, you, you can define something known as a subgroup generated by beta. Okay, subgroup of 
FPM star generated by beta. What is that? Basically, it's beta, beta squared, 7 by beta power r minus 1, and then beta power r, which is actually 1. Okay. This actually is a subgroup, subgroup of the multiplicative group. Okay. It's very easy to check. It has the identity, and you multiply any two of these elements, you will remain in this element, in this subgroup only. Okay. If you multiply beta by i times beta by j, what do you get? The beta by i plus j, which again belongs to this set. Okay. So this is clearly a subgroup. What is the size of this subgroup? R. Okay. What do we know about sizes of subgroups? There was a result I mentioned in the course of decomposition. What should happen to the size of a subgroup? It should divide the size of the group, which is what the result is. Okay. So R has to divide b power m minus. So this is an easy way of proving it. If you want a more laborious way, there is also other proofs, but I will just skip that. Okay? So there is more, uh, more literal proofs of this fact. But anyway, so R divides p part m minus 1. Is that okay? Alright? So that is the first property. The second property that is interesting is, if beta power a equals 1, then R divides a. So, so in fact, if R divides p power m minus 1, what does that mean? What will be beta power p power m minus 1? 1. Okay. So, this is an interesting fact. If in case if you didn't know it before, if you have a finite group, you take any element, raise it to the power of the size of the group, you will get 1. Okay. So, that is always true. Okay. And then, what is slightly more interesting about the minimality is, if I give you some number a and say tell you that beta power a is 1, then the order has to divide a. Okay, that has to happen. It cannot be any other way. Okay, so, how do you prove this? Yeah, so, what you have to do is use the division uh, theorem here. So, you take a and divide by r. You get q times r plus some reminder. Okay, right. Now, you raise, when you raise, when the reminder you know is less than r. Okay, and then you show that in case if the remainder is not 0, then you will get a lower element than R for which the power will be 1 and that will violate the minimality of R. Okay, so, that is the idea. So, what you do is divide, okay, so for proving this, divide A by R, A by R, okay, so you get A equals Q times R plus some Q prime and this Q prime is strictly less than R, okay, it can be 0 also but it is strictly less than r. Okay, and then what do you do? You look at this beta power a. Okay, so this beta power q r plus q prime, which is beta power q r times beta power q prime. What is beta power q r? That is one. So this is equal to beta power q prime. Okay. So now what do we know about a? Beta power a is 1, so beta power q prime is also 1 and q prime is between 0 and r. Okay, So, it cannot be anything from 1 to r, r minus 1, so it has to be 0. Okay, so, that implies q prime is 0. Okay, and that is the end of the proof. q prime is 0, r divides a. Okay, so, these two properties are quite important. Okay, the order, multiply the order of a uh, element of FPM star divides p power m minus 1 and if anything else is such that beta power a is 1, then the multiplicative order should divide a also. Okay. And there are more properties based on this minimality. Okay. So, I can write them down and try to prove them, but it is a bit uh, laborious. So, whenever we need it, I will invoke it. Okay. And that I may not prove it completely, but you will see that I will give it as an exercise for you. Try to prove it. It is not very hard to prove these properties usually some LCM and GCD and all will work. Okay, so for instance, one question is often asked is, if beta has order R, what is the order of beta power I? Okay, so what will be the order of, let us say, beta squared? What will be the order of that? Yeah, so you will have to look at some LCM of 2 and R. Okay, if R is even, then the order here will go by 2. If R is odd, then what will happen? It will be the same. Okay. So, basically it will be R divided by LCM of 2 comma R. 
Okay, that's a general fact. Order of beta power i will be r divided by LCM of i and r. Okay, so those are easy things to prove. You can just repeatedly use these results and argue the minimality that has to be. Okay, so I'll use such uh, such results later on when we try to prove the prove multiplicative structure. All right. Okay. So now the subgroup generated by beta is very interesting. Okay. So first of all, first thing I want to convince you is such a group that is generated by only one element is very easy to work with. Okay. Would you agree on that? Okay. When you want to multiply two numbers, two elements from some abstract group, and you know that it's generated by only one element, it's much much better. Right. You just have beta beta squared. The only thing you have to know is the Exponent. You simply add the exponent, take modulo r. It becomes just a binary, you know, like an integer operation. Nothing more you have to worry about, right? Otherwise, you have to multiply polynomials, do division, all kinds of complicated stuff. Okay, right? So when will our entire FPM star be generated by a single element? Okay. When can I say? There will be some single element beta, maybe this beta that I picked. It will. Yeah. So when r equals, when the order of an element is equal to beta n minus one. So if if I can show that there is some element in this FPM star whose order will not just divide beta n minus one, but it will be equal to beta n minus one, then what does that mean? I have one element of my FPM star that generates the entire multiplicative group. Okay. It turns out that is true for this FPM star. We can prove that. Okay, so which is what I'm going to prove next. I'm going to show that you have all these elements which have different multiplicative orders. It looks like we don't know what the different multiplicative orders are. We know that they have to divide p power n minus one. We know some properties, but we don't know anything more. But what we're going to show next is there is one element in this multiplicative group for any finite field whose order will be equal to p power n minus. Okay, so now we can ask our friend who gave us the finite group for that element. And you would know exactly how to multiply also. Okay, so multiplying two elements with with that generated by the same thing is very easy. We can do that. Okay. So just like addition was easy, once we know the structure, multiplication also becomes easy. <coughs> All right. So that's the next result, and it's a bit of a long proof. So you stay with me. I'll, I'll skip some steps, but I'll try to give you the most most important and essential steps. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so, so this is the fact I'm going to try and prove. There exists theta in a theta star such that order of theta equals theta over m minus one. Okay. This is the main result. You can think of it as a theorem if you like. This is quite an important statement about finite fields. It simplifies finite fields considerably. Okay, so this is one of the main results which makes finite field structure so much easier. Okay, every finite field has zero, and then it has just one other element which generates the entire group. So, what will the F FPM look like? Zero, beta, beta squared, all the way to beta power one. P power m minus two, and then beta power p power m minus one, which is one. Okay, so this is how every finite field looks like. Okay, so 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 contrast this with this picture. Okay, based on additive property, we have the picture for the finite field, right? Oh my goodness! Why am I doing this? Okay, so contrast with this picture, right? Okay, so from the additive structure, we came up with this picture, right? We said any finite field has to look like this. Okay, so by looking at the multiplicative structure, we are able to come up with another picture. Any finite field has to look like that. Okay, so you have two different pictures which we will use. Most of the time, again and again, in doing addition and multiplication. You see, this picture is useful for addition. 
this is useful for addition this picture is useful for main idea. So let's try to prove it. Proof is not it's, it's not uh, it's quite elementary but it's a bit involved there are some ideas. Okay. So first thing what I'm going to do is I have p power m minus 1 elements in my FPM star. Let's say we go through each element and pick that element which has the maximum order. Okay. If there are more than one you pick any one. Okay. Take any one element of maximum order. Okay. If I have to show that there exists a primitive element, what can I do? I can try to show that the element with maximum order, that order has to be equal to theta m minus. That will be the strategy. Okay. So we will first pick theta n of p m star such that order of theta x y is equal to r is greater than or equal to order of theta prime for all theta prime in f p m star. Okay. Our strategy is to show that r equals theta m minus 1. Okay. So, it is the greatest order among all the elements, the largest order and we will show r that that equals theta m minus 1. That is the strategy. Okay. So, the first thing we know is r is r divides theta m minus 1. So, r has to be less than or equal to theta m minus 1. Okay, so that is the first, uh, first result which is very easy is r is less than or equal to p power m minus 1 that we already have. Okay. So the only thing we have to show is r is greater than or equal to p power m minus 1. If show both then it has to be equal to p power m minus 1. So we will now try to show r is greater than or equal to p power m minus 1. Okay. So the strategy there is, is as follows. Okay. So you know that r equals oh my goodness. What did I do now? It went some three pages in advance. Oh my god. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to show oh my god. these modern devices are either extremely smart or extremely dumb. You know, this thing is true. Anyway, so r is less than or equal to p power m minus 1. Or I want to show that r is going to be greater than or equal to p power m minus 1. So, my strategy there will be to show the following. First thing we will show is, we will show if you have beta prime on FPM star <coughs> with order of beta prime equal to r prime. Okay. Suppose I give you that. This is the claim. I am going to claim. Uh, then r prime divides r. Okay, so this is a slightly strong claim. So I'm going to say r, r is my maximum order among all the elements. And then I'm saying, see, remember when I define maximum, I only require that r is greater than or equal to r prime for every other r. Prime. Now, once I pick that maximum element, I'm going to now prove that any other elements order will have to not only be less than or equal to this r, but should also divide the r. Okay, so that's our next proof. Okay, so once we prove this claim, we would have made some progress. Okay, and this proof is a little bit more twisted than you can imagine. Okay, so I'll try to write it down. Okay, let's say there is a prime number pi. Okay, okay. Let's say we have a prime number pi that divides both r and r prime. Okay. okay, so that divides. Why does this want to keep coming up? I thought I hit the. Sorry, what did I do? Oh, I can move to the top. How do I do that? Unlock it and then. How do you drag? Double click. Lock first. Oh. Top. Huh? 
I don't even have to auto hide it, no? If it's in the path. Okay, man. That's not bad. That's a good idea. Okay. So, so, so pi is a prime number. Okay, prime number. So that divides. Divides R. Okay, so let's pick a prime number that divides R. Remember, so every integer can that has a prime factorization. So there'll be a prime number that divides R. Let's say. Okay, so prime number pi that divides R, and let's write R as pi power a times R1, where uh, GCD of uh, R1 comma pi is one. Okay, so what do I mean by this? What do I mean by that? So I have extracted all the pi's that are in R. Okay, there are a pi power a of them. Okay, so a of them are there. So I have extracted all of them, and then I have r1 remaining. r1 does not have any factor of pi. Okay, pi does not divide r1. Okay, so the GCD of r1 and pi is. Okay, so a is the largest power of pi that divides r. Okay, r1 does not have any pi factor. Okay, so now r prime will be some pi power b times r2. Right? For so some b, this will also be true. b could be zero. I don't know. Okay. So some 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 uh, b this will be true. right again once again we will suppose that r two comma pi is okay so this notation is basically GCD okay what is GCD greatest common divisor okay? so there's no there's no common divisor when I say GCD is one it's very easy GCD one means they are relatively prime they don't have any common factor okay so that's what means. so r prime will also be like that we can show that b has to be less than or equal to a okay. So again, this is like claim star, claim prime. Claim prime is that b is less than or equal to a. Okay. So if I show this, I have showed that r prime has to divide r. Okay. Do you agree with that? Okay. I have taken an arbitrary prime pi, and I have looked at the factor of pi that is there in r. That's a. Then I am showing the same pi, the power that is in r prime has to be strictly smaller. Okay, which means for every prime this is true, which means the prime factorization of R prime will be such that it divides the prime factorization of R and that shows R prime divides. Okay, so that's the idea in the proof. Okay, so once I prove this claim prime, I'm done. Okay, B is less than equal. So the proof for this will basically construct. So we have to look at order of beta prime power R2 times beta power pi power a okay all right so i know order of beta prime is r prime order of beta is r what will be the order of beta power pi power a r1 what will be the order of beta prime power r2 pi power b and pi and r are r1 are Relatively prime, so if I multiply these two, the order will also multiply. Okay, so that's another result which I have not shown. Okay, but you can show this. If you have two elements, there are two orders. Product of those two, if you take the order of that, you will get LCM of the respective orders. That also is something you can show. At least for this kind of groups, you can show very easily. Okay, so final proof is easy. So this has to have order equal to pi power b times r1. Okay, and that has to be definitely less than. R right order of any element has to be less than R, less than or equal to R, and that proves my result. Okay, so this is less than or equal to R, which equals pi power a times R. Okay, so that shows p is less than or equal to. Is that clear? So what I've done is I've taken the element beta, which has maximal order R. Then I'm looking at an element beta prime, which has some order R prime, and then I want to show R prime divides R. How do I do that? I take every prime factor of R and look at its power in R, pi power a. Okay, and then I say the same pi will have power b in R prime, and b has to be less than or equal to. How do I show the less than or equal to? I use the maximality of the order of R in this twisted way. I construct an element whose order is pi power b times R1, and that has to be less than or equal to pi power a times R1 because R is the maximal order. So you cancel everything and you show p is. Okay. All right. So that's QED for the claim. Okay, so you have shown that if you have any element, if this element beta, which has, which has maximal order R, is such that the order of any other element has to divide that R. 
Okay, so our friend, if it's the order of any other element, it has to divide down. Okay, so it's a fairly strong result. Okay, is that clear? This proof is a little bit uh, abstract, but I think it's good to see it once. There's no other way to do it. Okay, so R prime divides R. Okay, so now what I'm going to look at is this. So, okay, so we're very close. We're, we're now going to show that R equals P power M minus 1. Okay, so for that, what we do is we're going to look at this polynomial X bar R minus 1. Okay, all right. So, how many roots can it have in FP, P power M? It can have at most R roots. Okay, so it cannot have more than R roots, right? So, but now I'll show P power M minus 1 roots for it. Okay, so what are the P power M minus 1 roots? Roots of all elements of F, P, M star. Do you agree? Okay, every element of this FPM star will be a root of x bar r minus 1. Right? Because I know the order of every element divides r. So, you raise it to the power r, it is going to go to 1. So, x bar r minus 1 will have roots as every element of FPM star. Okay? So, that implies r is greater than or equal to p power m minus 1. Okay? So, I know it is a field, it cannot have more than degree roots. So it's it distinct roots, so that is p power m minus 1, right. So, r is greater than or equal to p power m minus 1 and that, that proves our result, ok. So, that is our QED for the entire fact that there is an element in my finite field whose multiplicative order is equal to p power m minus 1, who has already had r less than or equal to p and p power m minus 1, so that is greater than or equal to p. Ok. So, so, the argument for the multiplication relies on so many other facts that you might have picked up here and there, but ultimately it, it gives a very, very simple characterization of the multiplicative group. Okay, there is one element beta which will generate the entire multiplicative group. Okay, such an element beta is called the primitive element of the finite field. Okay, so that is the definition which you should know. Okay. Primitive element of F P bar M is beta and F P bar M such that order of beta equals P bar M minus 1. Okay, so there can be more than one primitive element in a finite field, it is not unique or anything, but there is at least one. We know that every element has at least one, every finite field has at least one primitive element. Okay. Right? Yes. group. Oh, this polynomial stuff and all is not true for a group. See, up to the previous thing, everything is true. Maximum order divides and all is fine. Then polynomial is not true. No, see, I can come up with a polynomial in say z8, for instance, which will have only degree two but less four roots. Easy to come up with. Say x squared minus 1, if you look at x squared minus 1 in z8, okay, the multiplicative group modulo, no, additive group modulo, modulo 8 multiplication. Okay, so you do that, it is, uh, well, maybe it is not a group, but I guess for groups also you can come up with some examples like that. So it is this polynomial thing is not there. That is the main thing. So this polynomial identity, the algebraic uh, theorem which says number of groups is less than equal to p for m. That is true only for fields. So only for fields this will work. There are very many groups which are not generated by one element. <laughs> that is the main problems in problem in group theory. But fields not that much better. Okay, so let's see some examples. This is uh, worth looking at quite a few examples. So let's begin by looking at simple examples. We we'll first look at F2. What is the primitive element of F2? This is just, just 1 and 1 is the primitive element, okay? so there is no problem. What about F3? There can be only one primitive element here also, this is 2, 2 is the primitive element. What about F5? Zero, one, two, three, four. What is the primitive element? Two 
2 is from it is 2 2 squared is what 4 2 power 3 is 3 and then 2 power 4 is 1 ok so what else is primitive 3 is also primitive what about 4 4 is not primitive ok 4 is not primitive 2 and 3 are primitive ok so 2 and 3 I will just put a star on top of the primitive elements ok 2 and 3 are primitive so you can keep on answering and I think there are results saying in, in uh, F p you know, if you just have prime p there are some characterizations for when 2 will be a primitive element I think there is also a result which says either 2 or 3 or some other number has to be primitive always or some such. There are some results. For FP, there are ways to find primitive element. Okay, you can pick up some number theory book and you will see that there are uh, there are kinds of interesting methods for finding primitive element. Okay, well, it is quite important in FP sometimes. See, a lot of cryptographic operations use this FP. Okay, so, you should know. Uh, some things about uh, how this thing works, but it is possible to find primitive element. I think MATLAB I am sure will have a function which gives you primitive element. Okay. okay, so this is quite easy. So, let us move on to other more interesting examples. Okay, by the way, so if you do not, if you just look at m equals 1, it is some kind of a basic field, right? Okay, so some base field. Okay, so these are called base fields. Okay, so, let me say base field. If m is greater than 1, you have what is called an extension field. Okay, so this is the terminology. Okay, so every extension field will contain a base field. Right? So the base field will not contain any other field. Okay, so that way the extension fields are not as basic as the base fields. So the base fields are the most important. Okay. So mostly extension fields are also interesting to us. So let us look at F4. Okay, so the moment I say F4, you already know that the base field is F2. There are so many other things you can quickly figure out. We know what F4 is. Okay, alpha squared is alpha plus 1. So this is uh, model O2. Okay, what is the primitive element? Alpha is a primitive element, right? So you do 1 alpha alpha square. What about 1 plus alpha? That is also primitive. So 1 plus alpha is also primitive. Okay, both of them have order 3. So you do 1 plus alpha. 1 plus alpha squared is 1 plus alpha square, which is alpha. Then alpha that squared again will give you the. Okay, so let us look at F9 that we had. So the problem is a little bit more interesting. Okay, so let me write quickly. Okay, so that's F nine. Did I miss anything? Yeah, it's there, no? No, did I miss any element here? Is it nine? Two I missed. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so what are the primitive elements here? So remember, I should tell you what the rule is. Let's say the rule is alpha plus square, alpha square plus one is zero. Okay, of course, modulo three, right? So the thing is modulo three addition. Okay, so, so so I want an element of order what? Order eight. Okay, so if you have an element of order eight, okay. So the next, so remember, so 8 I know is the maximum possible order, order of any element has to divide 8, okay. So possible orders for the elements of F9 is what? 1, 2, 4 and 8, okay. So you can quickly check those things, okay. 1 is not, is an order only for 1, okay? right. It is very easy to check that. And quickly you have to eliminate 2 and 4, that is all. So you have to pretty much look at only 4. If, if, if an element ratio that are 4 is not 1, then it has to have order 8. Okay, there can be no other order in between. Okay, so that was a quick ways of checking it. Okay, so if you get see an element, you first square it, right? See if it is one. If it is not there, you square it again. See if it is one. If it's not one, that should be primitive. Okay, so it takes some effort to prove this. It's not quite easy. Alpha is not a primitive element. Okay, because alpha per four will be one. Okay, alpha square is minus one. Alpha per four will be one. Okay, so alpha is not a primitive element. Okay, so he's saying that alpha plus one, alpha plus two are primitive. Okay, there can be only two primitive elements, I think, or maybe more than two. Okay, can be any number. 
I think like, let's say so there's, there's going to be at least two. Okay, so these two are primitive. Maybe the other ones are also primitive. I'm not sure. Okay, you can check that. Okay, that's the idea. Alright, so in general, finding primitive element is a bit more involved in these extension fields. It's not so. It's, maybe it's not so easy, but you have to check. Okay, so you can check. For instance, let's look at alpha plus one plus four. What is this guy? Okay. So you have alpha plus four, right? What is alpha plus four? It's going to be just one. It's two, is it? Okay, it has to be two. Okay, so let's see. Then four times alpha that will be just alpha plus ten. Six times alpha squared, right? Six times uh, six will go away, yeah, right? And then four times alpha plus three, which is what? Okay, let me write it like that. No, four. no. Did I get this right? I think it should be an alpha square, right? This is fine, no? And then there's a plus one. Yeah. So. Then. Alpha power three and then alpha power four, right? Okay. Yeah, six will go away because six mod three is zero. Okay, we're running out of time, so so this will reduce to what? It's minus one. Alpha power four is one, no? One plus one is two. What about four alpha plus four? Yeah, that goes to zero. You pull four alpha out, you get one plus alpha square, so that goes to zero. This evaluates to two, so alpha plus one is primitive. Okay, so we'll stop here for now. So every every multiplicative group is primitive. And we're meeting again tomorrow, right? Oh, actually, tomorrow there's no class because I'm not in town. We'll meet again on Monday. Okay, when is the quiz? It's in the first week of September. Okay, so we'll have to do something about the quiz. So if you go to my web page and click on uh, E512, okay, you'll go to another page in which there'll be some assignments. There'll be at least two assignments which are relevant for what I've done up to now. Okay, one is called linear block codes. Another is called <coughs> doing algebra or something. First one. Okay, so those two assignments have, I think, I'm sure they have like at least some 30, 40 problems. Okay, so make sure we practice those problems, and we'll try to discuss that sometime next week or week after. Okay, so that's it.